So the reading is uh, from Matthew 5, verse 14 to 16. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Okay, so you are the light of the world. It's quite a powerful statement, that, isn't it? It's kind of a little bit daunting when you first read that or hear that. Now, I'm kind of coming off the back of Dora's talk a few weeks ago and sort of adding on onto that. So what is the need for light? So we know that in the beginning, at the start of time, there was no light. Instead, there was only darkness. Um, so you remember what God did on the first day of creation? God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw that, there, that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. Now, God not only made the light, but on the fourth day, he also made light sources or producers. It said, God made two great lights, the greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. He also made the stars. God set them in the vault of the sky to give light on the earth to govern the day and the night, and to separate light from darkness. And God saw that it was good. So why did God make the light? Well, as Dora told us and you know, showed us in various different ways, light is necessary and even, you could say, a vital part of God's created order. First of all, for the physical universe, any school student or anybody that paid attention in science were able to tell you about photosynthesis how plants take light energy and use it to convert water, carbon dioxide and minerals into oxygen and carbohydrates. Now, I'm not going to give you a science lesson. That's not why I'm here. But without photosynthesis, there wouldn't be life, at least not as we know it at the moment. But light's not only a necessary part of God's created order for the physical universe, so the photosynthesis and the life here, it's just as important for the spiritual, uh, for the spiritual realm. Without light, physical life is impossible. And similarly, without light, spiritual life is impossible. What we have to recognize is that our, our world is a sin-darkened world. And there's examples all around us. I'm sure every one of us sat here today can think of an example, whether that be in the world, in our country, in our town, or even in our families. I'm sure we can all think of a way that sin is darkening our world. It seems like there's darkness everywhere. So many people without the light of the gospel and the light of Christ. So you know what happens when we're in darkness? And Dora pointed this out with her little um, demonstrations. You are stumbling around um, and it, it's black. It's, you, know, you, you can't really see where you're going. You're stumbling around, you don't know what you're doing, you don't know where you're going and you kind of, you're hopeless. You don't have God. Um, I'm sorry, I've got my notes in the wrong order. <laughs> Should have checked that before. That's right. And that is the condition of this world. The condition of this world is that it is in darkness. And we're stumbling around without hope. Kind of, some of us don't, you know, without the light of Christ, we don't know where we're going, what we're doing. Or we kind of, we kind of know what we want to do, but like Dora showed us with the blindfolds, we can do it, but not very well. <laughs> and so this is the condition of the world. We're stumbling around without hope and without God. And what our sin-darkened world needs is light. And you're kind of probably sitting there thinking, uh, hello, Mrs. Obvious. Um, but... Christians, we are the light of the world. And what is the purpose of this light? Well, light has one basic purpose, and that is to remove the darkness. So I've just got a bit of a demonstration here, um, which when I first saw it, absolutely blew my mind. So I hope it's gonna blow your mind too. <laughs> so I'm just gonna light this candle and explain what I'm doing. OK, 
Okay, so we see we have a candle, and it's lit, and we can see that that flame is light. Okay, Lauren, could you come and help me, actually? <laughs> and just hold that piece of paper behind the candle. But don't set it on fire. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then we have a torch, which is also light. Now, as we know, when we put a torch on something, usually there's a shadow. But where there is light, there is no darkness. There is no shadow coming from that flame. So where there is light, there is no darkness. Yeah. For those of you that couldn't see, that's what was happening on the piece of paper. You are the light of the world, says Jesus. This means that it's the function of the church, the people, us, the church, to allow ourselves to be used by the Lord to lead the world from darkness into light. It isn't easy what Jesus is asking of us. We might even be tempted to think that it's impossible when you think about how we feel a bit outnumbered from Christians to non-Christians. But you might be thinking, how can our little light possibly have any effect on our sin-darkened world? Well, I want you to think of it in this way. Think of a pitch-dark room. If you light one single match, you can see that match in the darkness. It doesn't matter how much darkness there is, you can still see that match. You might feel insignificant, but you can still see that light. Don't hide your light. You are the light of the world. We need to realize that this means we need to be shining lights. Jesus uses the picture of a lamp which is stood on a stand. And today we would probably use the image of a street light even. The Christian and the church should shine like a street light so that those who can come by it, who come by it can walk in its light. Street lights would be useless if they were covered up. It would be just as dark as if they were turned off, it's pointless. Think about this. If the light does not shine, it's not because of the darkness. Because the darkness can't put out a light. Even if the darkness increases until it's pitch black, it's still not dark enough to put out that light. No one yet has smothered a light by increasing its darkness. Rather, darkness only gets darker because the light has failed. Darkness only gets darker because we put our lamp and our light under cover and hide it away. Which means that our lamp and our light is not shining before people if we keep ourselves isolated and hidden away from the world, which I know definitely post-COVID is so much easier for us to use that as an excuse to do that. Christianity is something which is meant to be seen. And I found this quote, and I couldn't find anybody to credit it to. Um, but it says there, is, there can be no such thing as secret discipleship. For either the secrecy destroys the discipleship or the discipleship destroys the secrecy. A man, somebody's Christianity should be perfectly visible to people. We can't hide it away. But I hope you realize that this means that we need to be different than the darkness. We, light, you see, it doesn't work as well if we just stay in our Christian groups and we stay in the bright, sunny light, it's so much more effective if we go as that single match into the darkness. We need to be different than the pattern of this world. We need to stand out. We need to show people what being a Christian and what following Jesus is about. The point is, our light has gone out if we think and act and talk just like the world. We're told in Romans, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. And this is exactly what it means. We cannot fit in with the darkness. It might seem like the easy thing to do. Um, I've been chatting with BYG over the last few weeks um, about school and 
you know, being there only a few years ago myself, I know how difficult it is to be a Christian in school, in a school where Christianity is not highly thought of. And it's come to light, <laughs> excuse the pun, <laughs> that, you know, some of our young people are really fighting a battle because they want to be the light, so desperately want to be that light. But there's so much darkness around them. And it is just about encouraging our young people and encouraging everybody around us because everybody has their own, their own battles with the darkness. That don't conform. Don't conform to what your friends are saying and doing, you know, particular language that they might use or um, particular behaviors that they might show. Don't conform to that. You are so much better. And following Christ, you know that when you have Christ in your life, your life is so much better. And you never know by being the light how you might help somebody out of that darkness as well. Just by being the light. You don't have to go out of your way to preach to somebody or tell them your testimony. It could just be the way you hold yourself, the way you talk, the way you act. Trust me, people will know there's something different about you. So I want to challenge you today. I want you to go away and think about this question. Are you displaying your light for all of mankind to see, or is your light hidden? Now that's quite a big question, quite a loaded question. Um, but really go away and think about that. Now there's a post-it note on everybody's chair. And what we're going to do is, Reese is going to come around and give everybody something to write on that with. So, what we're going to do is, Glyn, I, and BYG are going to lead us in a song. And whilst we're singing that song, um, you don't have to write on the post-it note. Feel free not to, that's fine. Write down any prayers or um, thoughts or challenges that you've had. And there's two tables at the front with this um, graphic on it. And if you go and stick the post-it notes on there, if you want to, you can take them away with you if you like. Um, just as a form of prayer, because I understand that for some people, praying out loud is quite scary, <laughs> and praying in a big setting like this is very scary. So writing it on a post-it note, God still hears that prayer. Saying it in your head, God still hears that prayer. Um, so we'll do that now. We'll just go with the song, and everybody can do their prayers. <laughs> 